Hey folks, welcome to a chat with Matt 2023, like a year end reflect, catch up, round up, whatever you want to call it. Welcome. Thanks so much for taking the time to check this out. If you enjoy this and you want to see more episodes in the future, give your boy a subscribe, hit the follow button, check out the Instagram socials, all that kind of stuff. How are we doing, friends? It's been a fair little bit. We did the Kyle McCurney interview recently. And uh, yeah, that one went really well. Kyle's a fantastic guy. Great response from that one. And then we kind of took another pause for a little bit because my main job has been uh, incredibly busy. I recently, well, not recently, it's been about a year and four or five months now since I took over the production manager position at the venue I worked at. And the year has been absolutely nuts. I spent the whole year working nonstop, essentially, trying to find like a balance of things for or a balance of things in my life because there's a lot of stuff on the go. If anyone knows me, they know I have a lot of different things on the roll at once. First thing, obviously, full time job, production, marketing. It's very, very busy, it keeps me very busy constantly, which is why we've had to make some adjustments in life to try and figure that out. Uh, the ML group, they're, the ML group's going to be coming in big in 2024. We're getting a plan set right now. Things are going to be rolling. More on that kind of stuff in a bit. Uh, the music stuff, we're doing one final show mid-January, and then that's it. No more live shows because the live aspect of shows, like the it's the before and after work that takes up a lot of time. And and to be honest, like the only part I really enjoy is the performing side. So like if I if I had less going on and... I had someone doing that kind of legwork for me. That'd be great. But it's just doing the legwork for myself. It's just, eh, I don't want to, I don't want to do it. (laughs) I'd I'd rather be at home because that's the thing. My, my life has kind of changed and my priorities have changed. And and now I'm kind of just like finding that middle ground of, all right, let's make everything balanced. Let's make everything make sense. And uh, we'll go from there. I love the work I do. And I, I believe I, I believe I've come up with a plan to manage my time more effectively so I can produce more podcasts, sit down with more people, chat. I have a couple ideas I want to do with this. Uh, some more content. I have some content ideas that I want to produce this year, and I think I'm, I'm going to be able to make it happen, hopefully in the first half of the year, depending on how things go. Uh, new original music and covers. I, I have a cover that I'm actually working on at the end of January. Some really cool dudes. It's it's a banging song. I cannot wait for everyone to hear what we do with it because I, I I know it's just going to be a monster of a tune. Um, yeah, and then more but more about that kind of stuff in the future. And then twenty twenty four. Just so you know, just for content, if I sound kind of like I'm reading stuff because I am, I have a, a nice chunky document in front of me with a bunch of stuff, and I'm just making sure I hit all these points because I, I was writing this. I was like, okay, I want this episode to be kind of formatted like. We're going to hit bing, 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 make sure we get the talking points in. Uh, 2024 is going to be an exciting and cautious year, or exciting but cautious, which is why we're here today. So aside from that and catching up with me, we're here to talk about kind of like where I've been seeing the industry go on. Of course, everything discussed here is completely my perspective. And just from my point of view of things, it's not any sort of hard facts. It's just how I've been viewing things and like some predictions and just where things could be going Uh, to start with though, like if it's very apparent, we're still in a recovery kind of position in the industry as everyone is in the world, because a lot of people are still recovering from COVID the pandemic. It's changed a lot of people, but for the music industry specifically, it's changed the landscape of both the digital space and, and the, the live space, the real world, like for the digital space, like TikTok has become, a monster of a platform and the power it has in this industry to make or break artists is incredible in both a great and terrifying way at the same time. And the real world, like the, the landscape of live events has changed. And, and I know a lot of people who work in live events can agree with me. Like there's a certain shift in vibe when it comes to live events. Now, don't get me wrong. 2023 has been a fantastic year. I've absolutely loved it. We've had a lot of fantastic shows where I worked and a lot, a good amount of sold out shows, not, not a huge amount, but we'll get more into that in a minute, but there's kind of like, there's an air of cautiousness around a lot of businesses and organizations and people about like, 
where where are we going to go next? We're still trying to f- get our footing back for some things or some things are just starting to take off, etc. It's it's because at least for me, it felt like everything was taken away in such a snap that that could happen again without any warning and we don't know what that would do to the industry again if it were to happen because like a lot of it shook up the industry tenfold like a lot of people didn't know what to do a lot of people went down staff reduced staffing release artists like a lot of people were just trying to figure out what the hell was going on right but covid showed us that the industry wasn't ready for this kind of pandemic type situation especially with the landscape the way it's been with digital media live uh, streaming etc but the th- also you know no one else was either and like I, of course I'm speaking solely on the music industry in this podcast, but and I, I have to acknowledge like the global change that's happened because of COVID in addition to like all the stuff that's happening globally right now, it's, 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 we're, we're, we're in a very, we're in a very different world. It feels like, and I feel like there's going to be a lot of changes over the next few years that really kind of cement where we're actually going. Cause I think we're just kind of in a weird transition, transitional time right now. Um, an example that oh, excuse me an example that like some some of the industry is still recovering slash changing like labels agency management firms they're like either not taking on new clients or they're being very selective about taking new clients or they're releasing clients that aren't hitting certain marks anymore or haven't for an x amount of time so that creates a more selective process for up and coming developing artists for both good and bad reasons for, for the good side of things, it makes things more selective, which can, and I have to emphasize the can here can produce a higher quality because you know, pressure makes diamonds. And if it's like a more selective process, then hypothetically you'll get more diamonds out of it, which makes sense of course. Um, And it also forces the artists and, Force is a good and bad thing in this situation because it, the emphasis for artists to have their own infrastructure in terms of how they run their operation of being an artist, like all their aspects, their merch, and anything you can think of, like that's a good thing for artists to have. But it it kind of makes it more of a challenge because it's more responsibility in addition to writing the songs. Well, that's the thing. The music is the fuel, right? So writing the songs, going out and performing, booking all the shows, managing your career, buying merch, like it's being an artist is quite a challenge. And there's a lot of aspects that you have to think about when you are an artist on the negative side of things, it can create barriers for potentially stellar artists to never be seen or given a chance. And that could be because, and I'll use TikTok for this example, because I'm going to go into TikTok in my next point like aren't on TikTok and not producing the TikTok content to get the attention of X label, X agent, X manager, or whatever it is. Because now a lot of people are signing off of only TikTok, TikTok hype. And like, which that's a dice roll in quality at best, because you're, you're going to get some absolutely stellar artists from there. Sure. Because there are some really fantastic artists that are coming off TikTok right now. However, There's also a side of that where it's like, it's a lot of gimmicky stuff because, oh, it went viral, sign it quick. And listen, people, people, people do what people do. And I understand the game. It's part of it. But when the space is being filled by artists that aren't of a certain quality, there's going to be a lot of artists that are of like a really great quality that have to figure out other paths or don't get the opportunities because of other artists, which like, like I said, it's a one in a million shot, of course. Right. But that, that's, that's the tricky part of it. Uh, another side of things that I kind of want to talk about is the, the live side of the industry. And it's been a mix, mixed bag of a year of successes and failures. And I'll, I'll explain why. Like, there, there was a good amount of sold-out shows, but a lot of shows, like, underperform. It's, it's a very tricky time right now. A big problem, and I know it's still a fairly big problem for some people, not all, but for a lot of people in the industry, there's a shortage on techs. That was definitely noticed at points of this year. I I had a lot of people calling me for like, hey, I'm looking for tour tech for this tour. Do you know anyone? It's like, no, I don't, because a lot of people I knew, and a lot of people knew, left the industry to go work in the trades or or go where there's a steady 
job where they don't have to travel and they know they're not going to potentially lose it if another pandemic hits, which makes complete sense. Because also, you know, they don't have to go on the road for three months. They could stay home with their families. Like there's, there's so many reasons why they would make that shift. But like I said before, there were some sold out shows and festivals and, and some that were complete blowouts financially or, or otherwise. And there was a kind of a general survey done in terms of like taking, taking a understanding of like what your droppages are in terms of audience attendees. And a lot of venues and festivals reported 30 to 60%. Uh, I know that that definitely feels accurate for the room I work in in terms of ticket sales. Like some shows were absolute hits, but a lot of the shows fell in that 30 to 60% kind of area. And the question is why, like really why has that been happening? Like things are back to normal. People should be out and about and doing things, right? Well, well not that yes and no, it, it, it's a, it's a bit of a tricky issue, but I have a few kind of theories and reasons why that would be. A percentage of the audiences are still cautious of returning to live events with small to large groups of people and potential exposure to COVID. COVID is still a thing. COVID has not gone anywhere. People are still getting COVID. There's a few really nasty flus that are going around right now that like I, I definitely caught one that took me out for a few days. It could have been a COVID variant, could have been a flu thing, but it's illnesses are still going around and there's some people that can't afford to take the risk, which completely understand. And you don't want to get sick. Getting sick sucks. And that, that really emphasizes people to get do anything they can to help prevent that, which if that involves not going out, they're going to not take that risk. Uh, the economic crisis that this country is in has caused people to be more selective with their spending. And a great example of this would be concert tickets or a bag of groceries. <laughs> because I don't know if you noticed, groceries are fucking expensive. <laughs> like, really I like we just uh, it's a New Year's Eve when I'm recording and releasing this. Uh, I before I did this, I went out with um, my partner and uh, we went out and got some groceries and snacks for for New Year's and all that kind of stuff. We didn't get that much stuff. It was a hundred dollars. Legitimately, we didn't get a lot of stuff. We got like a basket and like a quarter of a bag worth of stuff and it was over a hundred dollars. But Anyway, that that's the reality of where we're, we're living in an economic crisis right now. The, the inflationary stuff is getting insane. And I, I, for me, I only see it getting worse because shits where we have so much debt <laughs> and I'm not going to get into all that, but it's just there, there's so much happening in the world right now. And so many things are, it, it's changing everything and it's causing a lot of people to be more selective with their finances. And When they look at buying concert tickets, they're like, do I really want to go to this show or can I live without it? And it it depends on your level of connection to the music. It depends on your level of appreciation to the music. depends on how economically you view money, uh, what your priorities are. There's so many different things to consider. Like it's, it's not just a economic thing. It's a psychology thing. Like you gotta, we're trying to figure out what, why people are doing what they're doing. And it's, it's reactionary based on everything that's happening. For a lot of it. Uh, another another big thing, actually, an overload of events happening all over all over the markets at multiple venues, city ran events, theaters, nightclubs, trying to make up for two to three years of not having those events. And it's great. It's really, really great to see a surplus of events. For me personally, I love it because a thriving city is a happy city depending on the city you're in, but everyone has their issues right now. There's, there's a big issue on the streets, of course, depending on where you are. A lot of people not who, who aren't homed and it's, it's very, very try. It's very difficult time. And we, we have to be kind and as supportive as we can to each other during these times. But the thing is like, like I said, an overload of events happening all over the markets at multiple venues. It's, it's great, but because of that, because there's so much going on, it really makes it di- difficult. It's like because there's only so many people, right? And because if you include the other two reasons, that's even more of a challenge. Like in addition to all the financial struggle, the people who aren't potentially comfortable coming back out yet, and then all of a sudden, the, those people that are willing to come out and spend the money, there's such a surplus of things happening. They're like, oh well, we can't do it all. Like, we, what do we really want to go to? Which, for example. As artists like Taylor Swift, Taylor Swift had a massive year. 
which I just want to quickly acknowledge because the Eras Tour was everywhere. You you could not hear about it. She was all over the NFL. She was uh, she had the the movie that came out and did incredibly well. Like big up to Taylor. Get your bag. Get get that shit. Girl boss, all that. Like really fucking. And I'm not being saying that sarcastically. Like no legit girl boss. Like she's fucking kicking ass. Gen genuinely, nothing but respect and love for Taylor Swift over here. But when I say Taylor Swift, I'm also using that as an example of that is a show that is in high demand that people really want to see and are willing to spend whatever amount of money they have to to experience said show. Even with the movie that came out and it's available for rental for streaming at home or and it's probably online illegally now. Or like, there's I'm not suggesting to go stream it illegally, of course. I'm just saying that is an avenue. But like, people are still clamoring to get tickets for this tour because it's not even done yet at least from my understanding, but that's, that's great. But it shows that people really will throw the money and throw the energy to go to something that they genuinely really want to go to. And that's the way it's always been. But I feel more now more than ever in a post pandemic world, people are like, well, we really don't have as much time here as we thought. I really want to do what I want to do. But that does raise a potential concern for the developing artists and early artists in their careers because audiences may not be open to taking risk and spending money on an artist that they may not be as familiar with, which that that's a huge thing. And a lot of venues take a lot of risks on artists and they, they hope that there's an appeal for an artist of this certain thing. But of course it, it depends on the show. And like I said, you include all those variables. It, it's a, it was a really tricky year for a lot of shows and a lot of developing, developing artists, which can be an even bigger concern going into 2020 which also now puts on the artists to decipher a new way to connect with audiences and create buzz, which falls back to TikTok. And, and I keep going back to TikTok because TikTok, like I said, incredible platform, both amazing and scary at the same time. TikTok and social media is the future of artist development and career trajectory because that's where a lot of these companies are going to be looking like, what's your established presence at the moment on these platforms which also is like how much work are we going to have to put in to get you to xyz completely understandable it takes money and time and work to really get artists into a position where they are marketable to amass a group of people but but then that puts on artists in addition to all their other responsibilities artists have to become social media influencers in addition to being that artist which that can be fun. There is some, listen, TikTok's a fun platform if you can get into it with the right attitude in, in terms of being creative and all that. It's a pain in the ass. Don't get me wrong. If, if I really could go without using social media, I would. But like I can't for what I do in a bunch of the stuff I have going on, et cetera. But it, it's still great. It's great and not at the same time. So to, to kind of start wrapping this up, I, di I didn't expect this to be like a too long thing. I just kind of wanted to get on here and, and chat. Um, artists, uh, da, 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 where, are we, where are we here? Da, 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 da. Yeah, where does this leave us going into 2024? Um, I, I think, like I said before, it's going to be exciting but a cautious year because we're not really sure how things are going to go. But I think people are going to be more in a position of, okay, Maybe we start taking a bit more risk. Maybe we start going back out. Maybe we start investing in new artists, et cetera, and stuff like that. Um, AI. Uh, I will be talking about AI later on in a future podcast or video or something like that because that's a whole whole different mess of worms. But what's that look like for the future of the industry? AI is going to be heavily involved in the industry in some capacity. And I think we're, we're only touching the surface of what's to come because especially like, and this is on TikTok a lot right now is like a lot of AI songs, covers, SpongeBob singing bangers. Like it's, it's a lot of things. And listen, some of these AI songs are pretty good. I'm not going to lie, but it, it's scary to see that this could be where we're going. But like I said, I'm going to save that for a future and talk about it. I, I do believe steps are going to start being taken to try to get the industry to a growing place again with development of new talent. But I think that's going to be at a much slower and smaller rate 
like I said before, it's just that selection process. I really think it's like we have to have X, Y, Z to really hit the mark on this thing. And if the artists aren't hitting X, Y, Z, then we're not, we're not going to invest in and be a part of that, which I, I get it completely, but that, that makes it more difficult for the artists on the come up. Um, nostalgia and familiarity is going to reign supreme as people find comfort in the familiar. And, and what I mean by that is like referring to the Taylor Swift thing, it's the something that's familiar that like they know what it is or something that's nostalgic that reminds them of a previous time. It's that kind of stuff is going to reign supreme for a lot of the live side of things. Definitely because people want to go to the shows that they want to go to. And especially like tribute shows, tribute shows are some of them. They, they do very, very, very well. And I have a funny feeling that a lot of people, especially with certain demographics, they're going to definitely strive more to kind of the tribute shows kind of platform. Uh, new artists are going to need to make a splash if they want to stand out. Uh, basically, TikTok. <laughs> like, it's important to be well established on all platforms, but TikTok is the best starting ground. It's all. It used to be fairly easy to like bang videos and views and and do well on TikTok. I I've done okay on TikTok, but like I've definitely hit a cap at a certain point. And it just depends. You got to keep the content fresh. You got to keep it interesting. But you got to keep it authentic to you. But that's the one thing I would say to people is people want something authentic to connect to online, whether it's through music, whether it's through comedy, whether it's through whatever. And TikTok is going to be the place where people connect with that because you you have potential market exposure to hundreds of thousands of people. And, and depending on if the algorithm likes you and what you're doing, that's a, that's the other part of it, which I think we're going to definitely go into another uh, video that about that at some point, like TikTok and like, the what what is it not what is it but like more what what look like into the nitty-gritty of what they're looking for in terms of not algorithm but content and how people are reacting to it stuff like that um uh, yeah i am looking forward to seeing what the future holds and then uh yeah we're we're at the end of the notes we're just uh, a little bit over 20-ish minutes here uh, that's what it seems so that that's a pretty good place i want to leave it i don't want to take too much of your time depending on whenever you're listening to this but uh i just want to say to the people that have supported me uh with all the shit that i've been through in my life <laughs> um especially in my career and, and doing this podcast and um, everything because this podcast started during the pandemic and, and it's crazy to think that like i'm still chipping away at it at least a little bit now and, and like i said i, I want to get more into it into the new year but um other than that folks that's really it I don't have an exact plan for when the next podcast is going to be at the moment, but we got this beautiful Roadcaster Pro 2, two now, so we can start taking podcasts on the road. I just got to stock up on some gear, which won't take me too, too long, hopefully. But um, yeah, thank you guys so much for checking this out, and uh, all the best to you in 2024. Take it easy. Peace.